This week in Collective Worship, we're listening to opera. This is Luciano Pavarotti singing Nisum Dorma, which is Italian for Let No One Sleep. Let's take a minute for some guided meditation. Close your eyes. Take a deep, long and full breath through your nose, filling up your chest and belly. And then let the air all out slowly and gently. Continue breathing deeply and slowly as you bring up in your mind's eye someone or something you're grateful to or for. Breathe and appreciate. In your imagination, see the person or thing in front of you and fill yourself up with feelings of gratitude and appreciation. What did Jesus say? That's right. I am the light of the world. Good morning, everyone. This morning, I'd like to share with you the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments were given to Moses, and Christians believe that these were the original laws given to them by God. This is Moses, hey. who was an Israelite born in Egypt, in a time when Israelite boys were not supposed to live. Wait, huh? Moses, however, grew up in the palace of the Pharaoh, the very man who was enslaving the Israelite people. When Moses grew up, he made a big mistake uh -oh. and fled Egypt uh -oh. to live with the Midianites. But God called Moses back to Egypt ah. to deliver his people with the help of his brother Aaron. Ooh. After God showed his miraculous power in Egypt, he led the Israelites through the Red Sea and towards the Promised Land. They followed God who showed himself as a cloud by day 
and fire by night. As God led them through the wilderness, the Israelites became thirsty and hungry. They complained to Moses and Aaron and said, if only we had died in Egypt. God said to Moses that he would provide for his people. Hey. Each morning they awoke and found manna for the day. What's that? And each night God gave them meat. <laughs> the people were still thirsty and they were mad at Moses saying, did you bring us out here to die of thirst? Yeah. So Moses cried out to God, and God told Moses to strike a rock, and water came flowing out of it for the people to drink. And so the Lord provided for his people's needs. After traveling in the desert for three months, they came to Mount Sinai, and God called Moses from the top of the mountain. God spoke to Moses there of the future of his people and reminded him of the miracles of the past. After three days, there was thunder and lightning as a thick cloud covered the mountain. The people heard a loud trumpet blast. And Moses led people to the foot of the mountain to meet with God. God told them how his people were to live and how they were to honor him and respect each other. The Israelites had seen for themselves that God had spoken to Moses from heaven. These rules that God told them are called the Ten Commandments. And the Israelites feared God, for his mighty power had brought them out of slavery and provided for them in the desert. So what are the Ten Commandments? Pause the video now and see how many you can name. Welcome back. Let's see how many of the Ten Commandments you got right. Now the wording might be different, but the meaning of the Ten Commandments will be the same. Here's Pastor Nelson to explain more. So the Ten Commandments were given by God to Moses to be followed by the nation of Israel. The entire list is found in two places in the Bible, Exodus 20 verses 1 through 17 and Deuteronomy 5 verses 6 through 21. It's also worth mentioning all the Ten Commandments are repeated in the New Testament with the exception of the Fourth Commandment. The Ten Commandments list can be divided into two parts. Commandments 1 through 4 focus on man's relationship with God and Commandments 5 through 10 focus on man's relationship with others. The first commandment is, you shall have no other gods before me, meaning worship the one true God only. The second commandment is, you shall not make for yourself a carved image. This means don't worship or bow down to anything in place of God. The third commandment is, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. This means do not use God's name irreverently or disrespectfully. The fourth commandment is remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. This means rest from work on the seventh day of the week and remember what God has done. Now moving on to the second section, the fifth commandment is honor your father and mother. This means respect the authority and role of our parents. The sixth commandment is you shall not murder. This means do not take the life of another unlawfully. The seventh commandment is you shall not commit adultery. This means keep the marriage relationship sacred and free from infidelity. The eighth commandment is you shall not steal. This means do not take what does not rightfully belong to you. The ninth commandment is you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. This means uphold justice in a trial and only report the truth. And Finally, the tenth commandment is, you shall not covet. This means, do not allow your heart to long for and crave what is not yours. Thanks, Pastor Nelson. That was Pastor Nelson. And I think we can summarise it in two words. Be kind. We've talked about how rules and laws are in place for our safety and for fairness. 
We also heard yesterday about the protected characteristics. It is against the law to discriminate or harass someone because of one of these protected characteristics. We have the right not to be treated differently because of these. These protected characteristics help us to treat people fairly. It's important to treat people equally, whatever their age, whether they're a boy or a girl, whether they're disabled, whatever someone's ethnic background is, however people identify, whatever religion someone is, whoever you love, whether you're married to someone or not, or if someone's pregnant. It's important to treat all these groups fairly. They're called protected characteristics because that's exactly as they are. They are protected by law. Ultimately, it's about doing the right thing out of love and kindness and not out of fear of getting in trouble. It's about doing what's right out of love and out of kindness. This quote from the first Corinthians sixteen fourteen. I think it sums it up beautifully. Let all that you do be done in love. Children, I think if you do that, you can't go wrong. Let all that you do be done in love. I'd like you to hold that thought inside your heads. Read this quote inside your own heads and think about how important it is. This matches really well with what I ask you to do every day. Work hard, be kind and look after yourselves. Well, that concludes our collective worship for today. Remember, work hard, be kind, look after yourselves, and I'll see you around school. <laughs>